Okay, well this is the last uh, the last section of this series of tutorials on um, Matinee and Machinima. So eventually I'll probably go and um, make some for how to make your own custom animations and for you know how to do face effects and how to you know blah 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 you get the idea. Um, but right now I'm just gonna go over these last um, miscellaneous items that uh, need to be in here sooner or later and I just haven't gotten to them yet. So let's go to our uh, camera matinee that we made earlier and um, okay I'm gonna show you uh, the color scale here now you go to the director group you go to uh, add new color scale and uh, just add a few keyframes doesn't really matter where and first thing you'll notice when you go to to edit the properties on this is you really don't have many properties to edit just time and that doesn't really do you much good, you know, for, for actually changing what it's doing. So you have to go and add it to your uh, curve editor. And then go and open up your curve editor if you don't already have it open. Um, and then around the value of 1. So in my case, I have to scroll up quite a bit, actually, just to get to the 1. Um, and you can see these numbers along here are the values. Um, okay, 1. Now, what this does is... Um, it's as it says the color scale right so it's kind of like post-processing um, but it's set up by the director group so and you can um, set it so you can only view certain certain types of lines on the graph here and uh, they're basically just the different colors so for now I'm just gonna grab all these for a second uh, you you grab uh, a selection like that by pressing control and alt at the same time then you left mouse click and then while you're pressing control you can drag these around and I guess you can't grab multiple points for this part, um, so sorry about that. But you can see how as I move the blue line up, it increases the blue on the screen, right? So you see that pretty well now? And then, I, of course, I can do the same for the green, you know, and I can push these to whatever values I want. Same for red. So when you get these so high, though, uh, obviously you'll notice you'll really start to lose the actual color and it just starts to look white. So if we bring these... Oop, if we bring these uh, these values down a bit here, uh, that's not working at all, is it? If we bring these values down, there we go, uh, and we get them all down to something a bit more manageable. So let's try to take them all down to about. Uh, uh, let's let's see if we can get them down to one here. Um, generally speaking, uh, if I remember this correctly, uh, okay, let's see. So everything at, at one. Uh, basically means that it's normal color. Now I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks like you can drop these down below one also. So if you wanted to, you could say, okay, well now let's have no color but green in the scene. Um, then generally though, when you have all of them just above one, you start to get uh, more like just extra, extra brightness, extra color. You see that? So... I'm going to try this again in hopes that I can get it this time. Nope, still no. Well, I, I got two of them, though. So I must have just missed the third one. Let me try that one more time. No, nope, and I still only got two. So it might be because they're right on top of each other. Um, so let me try spreading them out one more time here real quick. And now I can grab them all. And you can see uh, in my viewport there how absurd this can get. Uh, and I've used this before, actually, to uh, go way, way up there to have the screen basically fade out to white. Um, and then, of course, you can go way down, too. Um, so I'm just going to get out of this then. I'm going to delete the color scale for now, then, because um, you don't really need to see it for now. And then um, director track, you already know what that is. Uh, we already got it there. Um, the fade track, I'll show you real quick. Um, if we go all the way to the beginning here, just to make it a little bit easier, and uh, while we have the fade track selected that we just added by right-clicking on the director group and going to new fade track, while the fade track is selected, press enter to add a keyframe. Now go someplace else, doesn't really matter too much where, add another keyframe, now uh, select one of them, whichever one you want, and set this to a value between 0 and 1. 0 means uh, there's no change, just everything is normal. 1 means it's completely black. So basically what you're doing is you're making a fade track, as it's called, uh, so that you can fade in or fade out. Uh, 
I'm sure it's not too hard to imagine how this could be very useful. Uh, you know, and I, I used it considerably, you know, and it's uh, pretty handy. And then that's really about as far as the fade track goes. There's really not much to it. It basically just controls the, the brightness of the screen. So you can fade it all the way down to black and all the way back up to one. And as far as I know, you can't set it to like a negative value. See, it doesn't really have any effect. It just, uh, you know, and at the same time, if I set it to like two or something, it still effectively thinks that it's one. See, there's no difference there. So I'll set it back down to zero here. And um, one thing I want to show you also that I didn't show you when I did, um, actually, never mind. I'm, I'm not going to show you this. I'll tell you about it, though, a little bit. Uh, you can set transition time. Uh, I forgot about this earlier, but when you're transitioning between cameras, you can set transition time. And to me, that really sounds an awful lot like they mean, okay, well, we'll fade, like crossfade between the two of them. And that's not at all what they mean. Um, but the thing is, you can't see it at all in editor. You'd have to actually go in game to see it. So I'm not going to do it for you to show you. But basically what it does is it makes it so that uh, in the set amount of time, when you, uh, when you go to... You know, when when you go to tra set transition time, you set an amount of time. Uh, what it does is it sets, uh, basically at that point in time, uh, wherever this camera is, it'll all of a sudden fly over to wherever this camera is in that amount of time. So it basically interpolates from one to the other very fast. But within the editor, the cameras aren't moving at all. It just, um, that's effectively just how you see it. So, all right, and then for the last, uh, the last thing I want to show you then, I'm going to go to our particle systems that we made earlier just because this will make it a lot more obvious and a lot more interesting I think so you remember of course uh, these particle systems that we made the fire that goes on until it, we tell it to stop and then we tell it to move but it really doesn't mean anything now we're gonna add a new director group real quick and while it's here we're gonna add a new slow-mo track and I'm pretty sure most of you can probably figure out what this is now the initial uh, value here should be set to 1 and then, uh, okay, we going linear here, we're going to go another one here and set it to 1 also. By default, it's 0, but you don't want that right now. You want it to be 1. So since it's linear, it'll stay at 1 during this whole time. Then we want it to go down to here, and we will leave that as 0. And we'll go to here, and we'll set this back to 1. And you can set this to anywhere between 0 and 1. Now watch. Now all of a sudden, oh, it didn't work quite as well as uh, I was hoping. So let's, uh, as it is a zero. So let's add another one here, and it should also be a zero. Hmm. Okay, let's set it to point zero 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 one. There it goes. Now notice how incredibly slow it gets for a few seconds. Because that whole thing is supposed to take five seconds total. But notice it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. So it, it took about six seconds total, which isn't incredibly long. Um, didn't work out quite as well as I wanted it to. I've used this to great effect before for some reason. It's just not working out very well for me just now. but. You get the idea, at least. Now, one thing I want to say about this, though, real quick. Um, right now, though, actually, I'll, just for uh, for kicks, more or less, I'm going to set this down to, you know, something really low and just test this out again. Okay, now you can see how slow it's really going, right? Uh, it still doesn't look quite as slow as it should, but you get the idea. So, anyways, um, I've used this quite a bit before, and one thing that I've noticed, this... Uh, that's pretty important is that when you actually okay when you're running in editor time runs at one by default when you're running in game it doesn't right it actually runs it seems like just a little bit faster so or I guess maybe it's a little bit slower actually anyways you get the idea though it doesn't run quite at one it I think it's very close but it's not quite so in my opinion, at least, any time that you make a matinee sequence um, that has cameras in it, you should always set slow mo to one. Even if you're not going to do anything else with slow motion, 
you should always set it to one just in case. Um, now if you're not going to do anything like that, if you just want to make like an elevator lift or something, then don't mess with it at all because you don't want time to slow down while you're going up the elevator or to speed up or anything like that. So, I mean, it could be kind of a neat effect, but if you're playing a, you know, competitive multiplayer game, it's not really fair. So, anyways, uh, that's pretty much it. And that really just wraps up the entire uh, matinee series here that I did. Um, so just to kind of review what we went over, we went over the intro, um, basic mesh movements, skeletal mesh movement, uh, a little bit of lighting, you know, sound and face effects, particle effects, cameras, and miscellaneous, which included, of course, you know, the fade track, slow motion, color property track, etc. Um, so there's a lot, lot, a lot more still, even after all this, that we could go through. Um, this is really just some of the basics, really. Um, 